Ladies and gentlemen, this is the test run. I couldn't think of a better way to uh, sit down and have a conversation with you guys than to talk about the Spanish mackerel. Now, this is the time of year where bait is starting to show up. The water temperatures are starting to rise. And whenever that bait does show up, you start to see predators following that bait in. Now, the first one that we're going to see show up is the Atlantic Bonita. And I actually filmed a podcast with Lex Hunt about Atlantic Bonito, and I'll link that in the description below. But jump over and check that out. Also, subscribe to his channel. But today, I want to talk to you guys about Spanish mackerel because that's the number two fish that shows up, and it's one that's a lot easier to catch. So let's say that I wake up this morning, and I see that it's blowing west offshore in the ocean here, and uh, five to ten mile an hour winds. That's perfect conditions for Spanish mackerel. Wave height's low. We've got a low period. It's going to be pretty easy for me to get out in my skiff. So I'm going to get up, get my stuff together. I'm going to throw my tackle, rods, everything in the boat, and we're going to roll. Well, I'm going out the inlet, and that's the first place I'm going to look. I'm looking for the terns. The terns are the seagull-looking birds that are actually diving down on the bait fish. Now, glass minnows are going to be one of the number one baits that these Spanish mackerel are feeding on, and the glass minnows are going to congregate in areas of, uh, of structure. So... Say you're going out the inlet, you're going to look for contours, you're going to look for the rock structure, the jetty. Um, look, Start there. That's the first place I'm looking. Um, the next thing I'm going to look for is the turns outside of the jetty, and you'll actually see those birds diving down on fish. So I'm coming out of the inlet. I see a, a school of, uh, of fish going off. The turns are diving down on the fish. Well, I'm going to try to ease up to those fish and uh, – Come in slow enough that I don't run the fish down, but also get there quick enough that I don't miss my opportunity on the fish because they do come up and dive. They come up and dive, show up 20, 30, 50, 300 yards away. So sometimes they're a little spookier than others. That's why you don't want to come in too hot. But I'm looking for, for birds. That's the number one. And a little a tip for you guys, if you are getting into Spanish macro fishing or you want to take a family member, you have kids that want to go, this is a great fish for you to catch. But a tip for you is to get a set of good binoculars. And nowadays on Amazon, you can get a nice set for 30, 40 bucks. I leave a set in my boat. They're cheap. If I break them or, or they get wet, it's not a big deal. It's easily replaceable. So look for birds. That's step one. Now, when you approach these schools, you want to have on uh, uh, jigs tied up, and they can range anywhere from uh, a half ounce to an ounce and a quarter, an ounce and a half, depending on how deep you want to get. But there's a lot of good options for Spanish mackerel. I've found in the last year that these uh, Sea Striker Surf Spoons, uh, they, they work great, just in shiny metallic gold. Uh, another name for these is Cast Masters. That's just a different brand. But basically what they're... The, the reason I feel like they work so well is because of their shape. They're, they're weighted uh, weight forward, which means that you can cast a lot of distance. And also the way that they're shaped, it gives it a lot of flutter as it falls through the water column, which is what's going to signify those Spanish to reactionary bite. Uh, another good option is the beach bum lures. I don't have hooks on these because I'm in the process of replacing them. But I want you guys to notice, this is a, the gotcha jig fish, another favorite of mine. I want you to notice the reason why these all work, in my opinion, is because of their, their shape. They're going to be shaped like a glass minnow, and you mix that in with a, a feeding frenzy of Spanish mackerel hitting a bait ball, they're going to hit any of these uh, options. So, am, am I, uh, so I'm fishing 25 to 60 feet of water. I feel like I can get away with an ounce most, in most applications. You can jig that off a 25-foot. You can jig that off a 50-foot. The difference is it's going to take a little longer to get down to the bottom. So uh, we've talked a little bit about baits. Baits are not as important. Another one I want to talk about is uh, the Sting Silver. Now, this is uh, – you can get these in different color variations. All they are is a piece of lead with uh, some, some frilly uh, plastic uh, metallic shine. I don't even know what that material would be, but it, uh, it creates that flash in the water, which is going to be similar to the, the gold spoon. But uh, that's another popular one for me. And then if you are if you like to fish off of the piers, a, a common one is the old school gotcha jig. Uh, this one comes in different colors, but it's also the same setup. It's a piece of lead forward with your treble hooks on the back. Again, commonality here is the shape, shaped like a glass minnow. So say you go out, uh, you're going out of the inlet. You don't see birds. You don't see anything. It looks dead. 
Well, then the next area that I'm going to focus is on different structure. Now, the structure can be an AR reef. The structure can be a contour. It can be a 5 to 10 foot variation in that contour. It can be uh, a, a rock randomly in the ocean three, 400 yards off the beach. And it's not that the, the Spanish like the structure. It's that they like the bait that feels safe on the structure. So that's why they're going to congregate there. And that's when you would use these same applications to basically drop down in the water column and try to get them wherever depth they are. And the next, next thing that leads me into is uh, how to read your GPS unit for these fish. So the GPS unit, you're going to set your down scan to whatever uh, sensitivity doesn't show the current. And uh, what you'll see is actually a cloud of bait fish, and it's going to be a solid shape. Usually it's shaped crazy because these, these bait are constantly swirling and in and, and, and a whirlwind. But you'll see uh, your squiggle marks off of the sides of that bait ball. And usually the Spanish, they will, uh, if you see one, you see multiples. And you'll see them actually up and down the water column. And what they do is they circle this bait, and then they just cut through and slash. So if you can get in a position where, even though they may not be busting on the surface, you see your bait. 10, 20, 30 feet down. If you can cast at where you think that bait ball is and let it fall through the water column and drag back through it, or at least on the edges, you're going to get some of those reactionary Spanish that are circling that bait. So that's the, the method that I use to try to find fish that aren't necessarily busting on the surface. And one thing I have noticed about Spanish is I do a lot better in the morning within the first two hours of daylight. Uh, I think you're going to get a lot better bite then. That's when everything is kind of waking up and feeding. Uh, so in my experience, if they aren't busting first thing in the morning, give it give it till about yeah, 7 to 8 o'clock in the morning, and, and they may surface and start pushing that bait up. And that's when you'll see the, the turn starting to dive down on them. But uh, another important factor here is uh, your leader material. Now, this is going to be a conversation that people will argue to the end of day, and that is, can I use monofilament or do I need fluorocarbon? My professional opinion is that you can catch fish on monofilament, but the way I look at it is I'm trying to be as effective as I can with my time on the water, and I feel like I catch better with fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon doesn't show up in the water as easily as monofilament, but the difference being if it's a, a bluebird day, the water is crystal clear, we've had four or five days of no wind, I, I feel like you need to have fluorocarbon on because it's going to be so easy to see it. Uh, monofilament, you can get away with it if the water's a little dirtier and you're, you're fishing areas that could be close to tide lines or, or uh, just dirtier water to begin with. But size leader is important to me. I feel like I need to be fishing at least 20-pound leader because these Spanish have very sharp teeth and they'll cut you off. But uh, I don't normally go above 30-pound leader. I think you can catch fish on any of those. You can catch fish on 5-pound leader, but you're going to lose a lot of baits. And at $5 a pop, it adds up fast, especially when you're in school and fish. So that's my take on leader material. And as far as rods go, the lighter the rod, the more fun the fight. But at the same time, uh, if you're trying to get the fish in, uh, something a little more stout might be the way to go. I like 6 to 12 pound for Spanish mackerel. I feel like that um, gives them enough give to not rip the bait out of their mouth because they do have soft mouths. But at the same time, it's enough backbone to fight a three, four, five pound fish if you do get lucky and land one of those citations. I think you can get away with like an eight to 17 pound rod. That's going to be a good rod. That's an all purpose rod for me. But really, at the end of the day, it's, it's up to you and what you want to do. I've caught them on four to 10 pound rods, but unfortunately, I break the four to 10 pound rods so much that it got to the point where I was like, I'm not going to buy these anymore just because I'm going to break the tips off of them. When you're spending 100 bucks on a rod, I mean, if you're anything like me, you try to make that thing last. So that's my take on, on rods. You can get away with any of those. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, as the water temperature hits the mid-50s and, and approaches 60s, it's time to start looking for the Spanish mackerel. Uh, they show up in droves. They, it's just one day they're not here, the next day they're here. It's an absolute blast. And if you are trying to get kids involved, or take a family member that doesn't get an opportunity to get out and fish like that, this is a great fish for them to catch. Not to mention, you throw them in a, in a pan of grease, it's hard to beat a Spanish mackerel. But I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the future podcast or, or some of the other things I'm going to be doing, feel free to drop a comment down below or reach out to me. If you have any real estate needs, I buy and sell. 
where I help clients buy and sell residential in Wilmington and land in eastern North Carolina. And also, uh, Nest Realty is unveiling a, um, a web application called BuySide, and it actually gives you an opportunity to log in your information, and it'll give you a home valuation range. So if, if say, Eric, I, I'm thinking about selling, I'm six months away. I want an idea of what my house is worth and what I could expect right now. Log into buy side. I'll link it below, and it'll give you an idea on what your house is worth. If you have any questions about anything, I also have my contact information down below. Shoot me a text, call me, email me, whatever works best for you. But I appreciate you guys. Today is test run one, and uh, I'm really excited. I, uh, I have some people lined up. I'm excited to get them on. But, yeah, start looking forward to these. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Have a great day.